Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the fertility indicators. In the previous video, we have dealt about the various other things that is eligible couple, the target couple, couple protection rate, national population policy and so on. Now we'll deal about the fertility indicators and the annual growth rate. What is fertility? Fertility by the term fertility means the actual bearing of the children and the women's reproductive period is 30 years starting from 15 years to 45 years uh, the world health organization and the national health ministry has given the um, reproductive age group to be from 15 years to 49 years so we see that the who says it is from 15 to 49 years and generally they consider 15 to 45 years to be the reproductive age group of a woman now let us see uh, we also remember guys the word natality is used by some of the demographers in terms of fertility in the place of fertility they also use the term natality the factors which affect the fertility now there are a certain set of factors which are affecting the fertility what are those factors the age of the marriage now the first thing is the age of the marriage the age at which the female marries and she enters into the reproductive period of her life will have a greater impact on her fertility when she is getting married and when she is starting her reproductive period of her life this will cause a great impact on her fertility females who are marrying before the age of 18 years see we see here the females are marrying before the age of 18 years those who marry before 18 years they have a larger number of children than who marry after 19 years so they have a higher chance of giving birth to a lot of children comparatively their fertility rate is comparative high for those who are marrying late because uh, the reproductive life is starting early hence the chances of getting uh, pregnant is also more Con she conceives multiple times give births to multiple children and she becomes a multipara so we see here the age of the marriage plays an important role then moving on to the next factor that is the duration of the married life the studies also have indicated that the 10 to 25 percent of all the births which are occurring within one to five years of married life we see that 25 percent almost 25 percent of the births will occur within the five years of the married life and the remaining 50 percent is seen within the mm, 5 to 15 years of married life so we see that first 25 percent is for one to five years and 50 to 55 percent in the remaining five to 15 years of married life this itself suggests that the family planning effort should be concentrated in the first few years of the married life because 25 percent births we see that uh, they happen in the just one to five years of life the rate is 25 percent then the remaining 15 years of life the remaining 50 percent is seen so you know the constant concentration of using this family planning has to be done in the first few years of the married life moving on to birth spacing that is the spacing of the children we see that the studies have shown that when the births will be postponed by one year in each age group there will be a decline in the total fertility if the birth spacing is done it will reduce the fertility rate if you reduce the births if you postpone the births by one year in each of your fertility age group then there will be a decline in the fertility then in uh, education has a inverse association what do they mean by inverse association here they are saying that there is an inverse association between the fertility and educational status how the education provides the knowledge to the people you know it increases the exposure to the information it also increases the exposure to the media people have a knowledge about the pregnancy the effects of pregnancy on health of the mother and the child how the so she requires a gap a time gap the space between one child to recover all her reserved deposits which are depleted during the 
pregnancy so we see that the female participation in the family's decision making and raising the opportunity cost of the women's time is observed it also builds the skill for the employment these factors play a major role this education is a key okay for reducing the fertility once the female is educated her decision making is she plays a role she is taking a participation in decision making she will start practicing the family planning like how we dealt in the previous videos the spacing has to be done so all such things she will keep into consideration the national family health survey also showed that the fertility rate is 1.07 children higher for illiterate women there is 1.07% higher in the illiterate women as compared to those of the women with a high school education economic status also has a inverse association we see that uh, the economic status which is bearing an inverse association with the fertility it shows that the total number of the children were born it start to decline with the increase in the expenditure of the household so we see that economic development is the best contraceptive guys so this once the economically the development is increased then there will be increase in the per capita expenditure the expenditure will also increase the status their status living status is completely different so the per capita expenditure of the household will also increase so there will obviously be a reduction in the fertility this in this will take care of the population growth and also it brings a reduction in the fertility now regarding the caste and the religion uh, without offending any religion and their uh, practices uh, we see that muslims have a higher fertility rate compared to the hindus because of their own religious uh, customs and their beliefs the national family health service reported that the total fertility rate of muslims to be 3.09 but now uh, recent studies uh, we see that the fertility rate in muslims has also come down to 2.61 in hindus it has uh, come down to 2.13 and christians it is 1.99 so the latest uh, numbers is what you have to remember these are the textbook values but always check with the latest thing and then uh, updated thing and write in your university exams and uh, wherever asked your pre pre pg or uh, entrance exams and so on so in the muslim so for now remember let us you know do it with this and fix these values in our minds in muslims now it has come down to 2.61 in hindus it is 2.13 and christians they have got it down to 1.99 so in you have to remember 2.61 2.13 Six one one three, okay, three one one. Uh, so and then the last one is one point nine nine. Family planning will also decline the fertility. Uh, we see that the family planning it is a very important factor in uh, fertility reduction. We see in the developing countries the family planning will play a very key factor in declining the fertility. We also see that uh, the nutritional status. it also has some relationship between the fertility levels the well fed societies will usually have low fertility whereas those poorly fed societies the rural uh, rural populations wherein the economic status is low they have high fertility rates the effect of nutrition on fertility is kind of you know indirect so moving on uh we have the fertility indicators uh guys i forgot to mention about one thing the other factors like you know the customs beliefs and the breastfeeding practices widow remarriages these cultural factors will also uh, play a role in the society we have biological social cultural factors like you know, including the industrialization urbanization the health services are better health conditions housing opportunities for the women all these factors also require this government's attention and it also plays an indirect role in the fertility moving on to the fertility related statistics that is the indicators starting with crude birth rate we have the crude birth rate in the first place 
and next we have the general fertility rate guys uh, also remember the crude death rate along with the birth rate then we have general fertility rate general marital fertility rate always add the marital in each of the fertility rates one is general fertility rate the second is general marital fertility rate age specific fertility rate age specific marital fertility rate total fertility rate total marital fertility rate gross reproductive rate net reproductive rate then we also have marriage leading to pregnancy and then the childbirth child women ratio if she uh, if the child is uh, like miscarriage is happening or abortion is seen so abortion ratio and abortion rate so we see that first we have general then general marital then next we have age specific age specific marital then comes the total fertility rate total fertility rate and again total marital fertility rate then gross reproductive rate net reproductive rate this you can remember marriage then leading to pregnancy then she uh, the child women ratio if she undergoes abortion abortion ratio and abortion rate so this is very clear guys uh, we are done with the indicators now let us deal about this indicators in detail in the each of the slides starting with crude birth rate crude birth rate is the number of live births during the year by the estimated mid year population in 2000 so crude okay total number of live births during that particular year divided by the population of that mid year population uh, estimated mid year population in 2000 this is our uh, like you know the formula for the crude birth rate the world in the world the crude birth rate is 18 0.5 in india it is 20.5 as estimated in 2018 crude birth rate is the simplest measure of fertility because it includes the total mid year population it is very simplest measure of fertility total number of live births by the total population with including the mid year population so very simple to calculate we are not you know scanning uh, 15 to 25 years 24 to uh, like 30 years 30 to 34 we are not you know doing all sorts of uh, like uh, divisions and classifications we are just taking the crude values total number of live births by the estimated mid year population simple guys now let us see what is the cause of this high birth rate now in india like overall in the world if it is around 18 in india it is 20.4 what is the cause for this high birth rate why is the mm, birth rates high universality of marriage everyone gets married and participates in reproduction so we see that if a man is not getting married or a woman is not getting married it's kind of you know humiliation in the society uh, uh, you know hoping or expecting that she is having some defect or some problem with her with him or her so we see that the universality of the marriage is uh, encouraged in the communities everybody needs to marry everyone gets married and everybody participates in reproduction so we know that uh, if there is a delay in getting the baby more than the couple the her relatives and her uh, the other uh, people will be concerned so we see that uh, the participation in reproduction is uh, highly encouraged moving on the early marriages 60% of the girls are getting marriage uh, getting married at the age of 15 to 19 years they are already married so we see that around the age of 15 to 19 years when you see uh, in india 60% of the girls are already married early puberty indian girls will attain the puberty early from the age group of 12 to 14 years the puberty is attained very early at the age of 12 to 14 years there are low standards of living they will result in high birth rate we saw that the economic status is you know is inversely proportional to fertility high economic status low fertility low economic status high fertility low standards of living high birth rate low level of literacy we also saw that if the literacy level is low there are high chances of the uh, you know um, fertility to be increased female literacy is lower in the rural areas that's the reason the fertility rates are high 
ट्रेडिशनल कस्टम्स एंड हैबिट्स एज आई टोल्ड यू अर्लियर द वुमेन्स मस्ट मैरी अ वुमेन मस्ट मैरी एवरी मैन मस्ट हैव अ सन इन ऑर्डर टू गेट द सन ही गोज ऑन टू फाइव सिक्स किड्स uh so uh, like if um, if a female baby is born he wants to have a male baby in order to have a male baby the fertility rate goes on hiking up so we see that um, the traditional customs and habits the absence of family planning habits this plays a very important role no family planning so the children are considered as a gift of god and they have the fertility rates very high so uh, i hope the causes are clear universality of marriage the early marriage early puberty low standards of living low literacy level traditional customs and habits and the absence of family planning methods so this uh, topic is very simple guys uh, crude birth, birth rate is the first thing we saw in the crude birth rate you're taking the total number of live births by the mid year population in 2000 In India, the crude birth rate is twenty point four, and we saw the various causes for the crude birth rate, uh, like the fertility to be high and the crude birth rate birth rate to go high. Now we see the general fertility rate. It is the number of live births per thousand women in the reproductive age group of fifteen to forty four years or forty nine years in the given year. so we see that in the general fertility rate we take the number of the live birth in an area during that year in one particular area you are calculating during that year the number of live births of that particular area divided by mid year female population of the reproductive age group we see how many reproductive age group women are found in that same area in that same year in 2000 that is the general fertility here you are taking the live birth by what is the uh, like uh, difference guys now we saw now you might feel everything is seeming same so we saw crude birth rate in crude what did we do the number of live births live birth was taken by what did you take in the denominator you took the mid year population crude okay mid year population the entire population was considered here in the general fertility rate you are considering the number of live birth true divided by the main important thing is that divided by you are taking the mid year female population of the reproductive group age only you are considering the group age of 15 to 49 or 15 to 45 years clear guys this is the main differentiation in the general fertility rate in the general fertility you are considered only the reproductive age group of 15 to 49 years moving on uh it is a better measure of the fertility than the crude birth rate we don't know in the crude birth rate most of the like we are taking the total population mid year population of that thing so most of them might not reach the age of 15 years they might not enter the reproductive age group most of them could be uh, under 5 and then we also have the women uh, who have attained menopause uh, 50 plus years so all these people who are not participating in reproduction are also considered under the fertility so better measure Mm, of fertility than the crude birth rate is this general fertility rate and we also saw the reason why its weakness is that not all women in the denominator are exposed to the risk of the childbirth and also it has the drawback that all these women might not be exposed to the risk of the childbirth yet moving on to general marital fertility rate so this is the plus point now now we saw 15 to 45 years or 44 years now we saw 15 to 44 years here in what the general fertility rate now in this uh, if the girl has not yet married now she is marrying at the age of 20 she has not entered the reproductive uh, like she has not started her um, fertility yet she has entered the reproductive group but she is not exposed to the risk of the childbirth she has not conceived she has not given birth to a live baby uh, and another woman okay she has uh, attained her family size got her hysterectomy done at the age of 40 also she is not participating so we see that uh, the um, the women who are not married yet are also added here in the general fertility you are considering the women of the reproductive she is reproductive group she has entered i am considering her is the general thing 
what about the general marital fertility rate in the marital fertility rate you are considering the mid year population of the women of the reproductive age group of 15 to 44 the similar thing is considered but the only thing is since you are considering the marital fertility rate this age group you are taking only the married women married women this 15 year might not be married the 17 year might not be married the 19 year one is married so you are considering only the 19 is you know um, uh, eligible to this uh, ratio so we see that the number of live births by the mid year population of the married women of the reproductive age group we are considering the married women because we are taking the general marital fertility sorry guys so we uh, got it now we are moving on age specific fertility rate what is age specific fertility rate the number of live birth in a particular age group very important in age specific you are selecting a particular age specific group it could be any specified age group so let us see the you know throw a light on the fertility pattern of certain age groups uh let us consider usually we are measuring the age group of uh, 15 to 19 years 15 to 19 years and 20 to 24 years so we see that number of live births in that particular age group this is the age group you are considering and the number of live birth only in this age group not the complete you are not taking from 15 to 49 or 45 you are only considering from 15 to 19 you are only considering from 20 to 24 a specified groups are being formed so we saw that only the specified group is being formed and that group how many of uh, the live births are given in the age group of 15 to 19 and how many live births are given by the age group of 20 to 24 is considered age specific marital fertility rate now what is this age specific marital fertility rate the number of live birth in the particular age group again let us consider married women 20 to 24 by mid year population of the married female of the same age group also the what is the mid year population how many live births is given divided by the total mid year population of the married female of the same age group if you are considering uh, if you are considering the 20 to 24 age group how many live births were there 20 to 24 there uh, how many live births were there uh, some 2000 live births are there divided by mid year population of the married female of the same age group you have to divide by the total same age group that is 20000 let us consider 20000 women were there not any thousand or any any number okay we, do, we are not bothered about the numerical or the number only thing you have to understand is that when you are considering the particular age group the married female is also belonging to the same age group into thousand very simple we are adding marital so we are adding married female of the same age group now we are moving on to the total fertility rate the total fertility rate will represent the average number of the children a woman would have you know the average number you're taking an average number of a children a woman would have if she has gone through out her reproductive years if she were to pass through her reproductive years bearing the children at the same rates as the women now in each age group so we see that here Uh, a woman is passing through all her reproductive age groups okay uh, now uh, at the age group of 15 to 19 she did not give birth to anybody she was studying she was in her college now let us uh, calculate uh, let me take a blue pen so we see that at the age of 15 to uh, at the age of 15 to 19 years she was in her college university so she did not give birth to any baby at the age of 20 to 24 she gave birth to one baby and then from the age group of 25 to 30 from the age group so what did we see 20 to 24 she gave birth to one baby then from the age group of 25 to 30 she gave birth to another baby then uh, 30 to 45 she did not give birth again so the total assuming uh, the all the reproductive age group she uh, went through and the sum of the fertility of all ages it is obtained by summing up the single age single year age specific 
fertility rates at a given time so we see that here what you're doing if she is passing through all her reproductive ages and how many children she is giving birth to and also you are considering a single year age specific fertility mm, 15 years 16 years 17 years did she give birth yes did she give birth no yes this is how you're going to calculate it 18 19 to up to 45 divided by the uh, thousand so now we see that this is just a you know you're not actually calculating it you cannot you know take a single female uh, the population is uh, in uh, you just can't it's not theory it's just theoretical you practically cannot perform this uh, you know the study or the calculations it's just a synthetic rate it is not actually counted now what do we do in this we see that the total fertility rate it is also known as period total fertility rate it is the sum of fertility of all ages which is obtained by summing up the single year age specific fertility rates we saw all of this at a given time it is just a synthetic rate it is not actually calculated what is the you know use of this uh, total fertility rates it gives us a magnitude of the approximately completed family size by this total fertility rate we get a magnitude a value of the total uh, completed family size that is what is a completed family size that is the number of alive children in a family we have the total cohort fertility rate which is a better estimate to the completed family size compared to the total fertility rate a better study is cohort fertility rate total cohort fertility rate total fertility rate only word you remember cohort study so we uh, will study about our cohort studies and all in the next videos in those respective chapters for now focus guys here the total fertility rate is the best indicator at the administrative level the couple protection rate is the best indicator at the grassroots level if you want to take the estimate at the administrative level the total fertility rate is fine good but if you want to take at the grassroots level uh, the couple protection rate is good if the couple protection rate if they are using uh, con uh, like you know the protection like condoms iucds ocps uh, all those intrauterine devices sterilization if it is used uh, more than 60 percent then uh, the couple protection rate if it is uh, good it is measured at the grassroots level whereas at the administrative level we go with the total fertility rate in india the total fertility rate according to 2017 was 2.2 we have dealt about this total fertility rate and so on in the previous videos as well so let us it's like a quick revision to us so we see that in india the total fertility rate is 2.2 in 2017 for the replacement or adequate level of total fertility rate 2.1 the net so we see that the total fertility rate is 2.1 and the net reproductive rate is 1 to achieve the net reproductive rate to be 1 we want the couple protection rate to be more than 60 percent this is what we had studied so the similar thing the total fertility rate at which a newborn girl would have the average number of exactly one daughter over her lifetime so we see that a newborn girl a newborn girl is having the capacity to replace herself with another baby she will give birth to another female in her life and it is a replacement to her this baby will this uh, baby will grow up she will give birth to another baby and she will be a replacement to this female women have just enough babies to replace themselves at least on an average exactly one daughter she will give birth in her uh, lifetime the relationship between the gross uh, reproductive rate and net reproductive rate there is a relationship this you know this is for the pre-pg exam uh, preparations uh, at the ug level i don't think so this is uh, these values are required but for your uh, neat pg uh, preparations these uh, you know this formulas and all will uh, help you the questions have been asked is this underlined the things these are the questions which are seen in the previous question papers we see that the gross the gross reproductive rate and the net reproductive rate have some relation what is this relation the total fertility rate will be equal to the two times the total fertility rate is equal to two 
times the gross reproductive rate or net reproductive rate it is two times the gross reproductive rate or net reproductive rate and the gross reproductive rate or the net reproductive rate is half of total fertility rate approximately so it's very clear guys here you can see the total fertility rate the total fertility rate is two times the what is the net reproductive rate in india one so the total fertility rate is two it is two times the net reproductive rate and if you want to calculate the net reproductive rate if you want to calculate the net reproductive rate it will be half approximately half of the total fertility rate very simple reverse of this the relationship between the crude birth rate and total fertility rate now in the first place we studied the crude birth rate wherein what the total live birth by the mid year population irrespective of the reproductive age group or not we calculated so this crude birth rate has some relationship with the total fertility rates what is this relation we see that the crude birth rate the crude birth rate will be equal to 8 times the total fertility rate plus 1 okay what's the thing you have to remember crude birth rate is 8 times the total fertility rate plus 1 moving on we have total marital fertility rate total marital fertility rate is the average number of a children that would be born to a married woman if she experiences the current fertility pattern so we are considering the married women here again in the total fertility rate focuses on the married women only if she is following the current fertility pattern throughout her reproductive span she needs to follow the current fertility pattern and uh, we have this thing the formula for the total marital fertility it is 5 into you know your the sum of you're taking the sum of uh, like the entire years uh, that is 15 to 19 and uh, 45 to 49 and by 1000 so why did we take this 5 5 is nothing but you know the uh, the 5 is because uh, if the 5 year age groups are used then we consider it to be the uh, the number we take 5 if we are considering the 5 age groups if you are considering 4 age groups you you should multiply it by 4 if you are considering 3 age groups multiply by 3 based on the number of the age groups you are uh, considering you have to have the multiplication the total fertility rate the the formula for the total fertility rate is we have the 5 age groups you are considering and the sum of all of the age groups that could be 15 to 49 and 15 to 19 20 to 24 all of these age groups divided by 1000 why did we take this 5 why are we multiplying because the total number of age groups you are considering based on that so i hope the formula is clear it is nothing but you are summing up all the things divided by 1000 multiplying with the total number of age groups you are considering okay the sum it can be written with this sigma so now we have uh, we have completed the total marital fertility rate as well now moving on to the gross reproductive rate and net reproductive rate so we there is a major difference between the gross reproductive rate and the net reproductive rate in the gross reproductive rate it is the average number of girls that would be born to a woman if she experiences the current fertility pattern throughout her reproductive span assuming age specific fertility pattern but not the mortality pattern so uh, i will first give you the explanation and then uh, read out the definition which will make you understand better here you are seeing that if the woman is you know following the current fertility patterns and she is completing her entire reproductive span and the number of girls which are being born to the women so we see that only thing you have to remember is the number of girls which are born to a women the number of girls born to a in the, this thing you are taking the women okay a woman is considered and the fertility pattern is considered 
but the mortality is not considered always remember here they have told the women now let us see uh, what in india it is 1.1 now let us see the net reproductive rate the number of daughters a newborn girl will bear during her lifetime taking into account the age specific fertility pattern but and mortality patterns it includes the mortality rates in it so what do they mean by this here what's happening the total number of girls that would be born to a woman here they are saying number of daughters or the girls which will be born to a newborn baby during her lifetime they are taking into account the fertility pattern also the mortality pattern is considered here why why is the mortality pattern considered here in the gross reproductive rate and the net reproductive rate we see that here they are considering a woman here they are considering a newborn baby and here the mortality rate is not considered here mortality rate is considered fertility fertility in both places considered the mortality pattern is considered in net uh, in the uh, net reproductive rate because a newborn baby she has to undergo the uh, risk of infant mortality rate you know infant mortality and then she has to undergo the under 5 mortality risk a neonatal mortality in the first place so all these stages she has to pass to become a woman this woman has already passed all those tests and she has already entered into the reproductive age group so we are just considering the fertility patterns of that period but not the mortality whereas in the net reproductive rate this newborn girl is going to give birth to the baby for her to grow up she needs to uh, pass this neonatal mortality infant mortality risk under 5 mortality risk become an adult uh, you know enter her reproductive age group and then give birth to the babies so the specific fertility pattern is considered whereas the mortality pattern is also included in the net reproductive period the net reproductive rate if it is less than 1 it means that the population is less than adequate requirement net reproductive 1 if it is equal to 1 it means that the generation of women is reprodu reproducing itself we saw that if the net reproductive rate is 1 when one woman who is born will be able to replace herself she will give birth to one daughter in her lifetime and that daughter will replace that woman and this daughter will re if she give birth to another baby she will replace her so this cycle repeats so the net reproductive rate if it is equal to 1 the generation is able to reproduce itself if it is less than 1 the generation is inadequate to achieve the net reproductive rate to be 1 to achieve the reproductive rates to be 1 we know that the couple protection rate how much should it be guys it should be less than it should be less than 60% you know by now you are very thorough with this thing total fertility rate uh total fertility rate 2.1 uh, so in order to reach uh, achieve the net reproductive rate to be 1 we want the couple protection rate the couples need to use the protection uh, it should be sorry guys it's not less than i'm very sorry it is more than 60% the couple protection rate should be more than 60% i am extremely sorry the couple protection rate should be more than 60% to achieve a net reproductive rate of 1 so i guess this is clear moving on we have marriage rate pregnancy rate child to men ratio abortion ratio and abortion rate it's very simple a woman gets married she becomes pregnant uh, and now we are uh, our, her first baby the child women ratio in the second she had the miscarriage or an abortion so abortion ratios and the abortion rates so let us remember in this pattern write down marriage pregnancy uh, child women abortion abortion ratio rate starting with the marriage rate the number of marriages which are taking place in a year in a given area divided by mid year population into 1000 very simple next we have pregnancy that is number of pregnancies by the women of reproductive age group into 1000 so in the marriages you are taking the mid year population in pregnancy you are taking the women of the reproductive age group 
here the pregnancy will also include the live birth still birth abortion and also the um, pregnancies which are not yet terminated so all these um, includes the women of reproductive age group who are pregnant the live birth pregnancy the still birth pregnancy abortion everything falls under the pregnancy rate child women ratio the number of children so child is less than 5 years less than 5 years that is 0 to 4 years child uh, the number of children aged 0 to 4 years by the women of reproductive age group into 1000 abortion ratio in abortion ratio you are taking the number of abortions by the number of live birth in the year in the abortion rate we see that number of abortions by the reproductive age group here you are taking the ratio so ratio we consider this is the abortion uh, and these are the live births live birth the live births if they are 10 the ratio abortions are 2 so we are taking the ratio to the we are comparing it to the live births whereas at the rate at which they are dying we consider only the number of abortions which are taking place by the women of the reproductive age group in this ratio we are taking so we are considering the live births as well as the abortions are being compared so i guess the pregnancy uh, marriage child women ratio abortion rate and ratio is clear when you're taking the ratio consider the abortions by the live births if the rate is considered at rate so we consider the women of the reproductive age group moving on to the last indicator that is the crude death rate crude death rates are the number of deaths during the year by mid-year population into thousand so very simple the total number of deaths which are taking place in that particular year by the mid-year population in the world the average crude death rate is 7.89 maximum death rates are observed in lesitho that is 15 and the minimum death rates are observed in uae uh, that is 2 in India, the crude death rate is 6.7. So, we see that in India, the crude death rate is 6.7%. Uh, the crude, the why do they consider crude? It is because it includes all the causes of the death. The causes of the death, it could be in the females, it could be because of, you know, uh, like reproductive, uh, like a... Uh, uh, reproductive diseases like uh, uterine cancers and then uh, we also have the abortions uh, postpartum complications and all those things uh, in males uh, prostate ca cancers and then stds uh, heart attack then those developing countries and non-developing all those uh, diseases like heart attacks coronary vascular diseases kidney irrespective of all the ages this age okay reproductive age group in this old age group so irrespective of the age irrespective of of the cause it is independent also of the age of the population that's the word crude is taken okay in general the whole we are considering irrespective of any age any cause and also the uh, cause and the age causes of declining death rate the death rates have started to decline now what is the cause for the decline in the death rate there is a mass control of the diseases so fortunately the control of the diseases like smallpox plagues cholera and malaria has been done which is reducing the death rates we have advances in the medical sciences like we have chemotherapy we have antibiotics which are given and very soon the early uh, detection is done the early diagnosis and the treatment has started we, we do chemotherapy antibiotics are given in this way there is advances in the medical sciences which is improving the health condition as a result the um, death rates are reducing also the better health facility when there is an establishment of phc chcs and more it is causing an improvement in the health better health facilities are provided at the community levels so this is causing a decrease in the death rates the crude death rate now we are moving on to the last topic that is annual growth rate the annual growth rate is the change in the number of individuals in a population per unit time understand by the term annual so you are considering the here the 10 is considered it's not annually uh, we are considering 10 i will tell you why the number 10 has come up here it is the change in the number of when there is a growth you are counting the extra number which are added into the population change in the number of the individuals in a population per unit time in the world the average growth is 1.05 highest growth is seen in lebanon that is 5.99 in india 
India, the annual growth rate growth rate is one point one nine to one point two. Let us take this one point two. The annual growth rate in India is one point two. The annual growth rate is the crude birth rate minus the crude death rate by ten. Why ten? Because the census has been conducted once in ten years. It is consider. Ah, uh, it is ah uh, taken once in ten years. So the po increase in the population is measured once in ten years. The crude birth rate twenty minus if the death rate is fifteen by ten. By this way, you calculate the. So point five percent was the growth. So in in this way, we calculate the annual growth rate. In India, it was one point two. Now let us see the growth ratio. Growth ratio is the annual growth rate, whatever you get the value into hundred. Okay, we got one point two into hundred. So we see that the growth ratio is the annual growth rate into hundred. The if there is a positive growth rate, when you calculated the growth rate, if there is a positive growth rate, obviously it means that the population is increased. And then if there is a negative growth rate, it means that the population is decreased. So we see that uh, if it is, if it is, if it is positive, if the value is positive, population increase. If the value is negative, it means population decrease. If the zero growth rate, okay, there is zero growth rate, it means the population is also stationary. There is neither increase nor decrease. The population is also stationary because there is no increase nor there is a decrease in the population. Hundred crude births were hundred, crude births were hundred and hundred died. So uh, we see that the population is stationary. Next, ah, uh, we have the population growth model. We have two major models. Ah, uh, you have to remember that is logistic growth model and Malthusian growth model. Very important. Malthusian growth model. It is an ancestral ah uh, logistic growth model. Now we consider the logistic growth model. Ancestor of this ah uh, logistic growth model was Malthusian growth model. Model, model, model. So, ah, uh, rule of seventy. Now we are moving on to the rule of seventy. If the growth is measured annually, then now according to the rule of seventy, if you start measuring the growth annually, it shows that if there is point five percent growth, there is doubling of the population every one forty years. So we see that the population gets doubled in one forty years. To remember this, uh, always go with this value. And the remaining you can calculate whatever is asked for you. You can calculate and tell the values. You remember this, okay? If there is one percent growth, if there is one percent growth, it will result in the doubling of the population in seventy years. One percent growth. If there is one percent growth, the doubling of the population occurs in seventy years. If there is two percent growth, it will result in the doubling of the population in how many years, guys? How much do we get? Thirty-five. Right, so the value will be thirty-five. If the growth of the population is one point two, then the doubling of the population will occur in sixty years. You know the calculation. Only thing you have to remember is if the growth is one, doubling will occur in seventy years. If the growth is two, it is by two, that is thirty-five. Then if it is point five, if it is point five, it will be obviously, it will be one. Forty. If it is one in seventy, two in thirty-five. So if it is point five, it means that the doubling of the population will take up to one forty years. If it is one point two, it will result in sixty years. If it is one point five, it will occur in fifty years, and so on. You can calculate. Okay. If it is like, uh, if it is two years, it is thirty-five. Then if it is three years, what will you do? Thirty-five by two. Okay. Similarly, you have to uh, like go on with the calculations. Annual growth rate interpretation. If it is less than point five percent, there is slow growing population. The population is slow growing. If it is point five to one percent, it is moderately growing. If it is one to one point five percent, it is rapidly growing. One point five to two percent, very rapidly growing. If it is more than two percent, it is explosively growing population. You know, explosively the population is growing. 
so i hope it is clear 0.5 how is the uh, growth slope if it is uh, 1 percent almost 1 percent moderate 1 to 1.5 rapidly growing 1.5 to 2 very rapidly growing then the last one more than 2 it is explosive very high i hope it's clear exponential growth now we're moving on to exponential growth the rapid growth in the population which leads to the misbalance in the birth and the death is nothing but the exponential growth wherein there is a misbalance between the birth and the death rates this is important guys this is also asked in mm, neat uh, that pg examination where uh, the exponential growth is there uh, what is exponential growth when there is a rapid growth which is leading to the misbalance in the birth and the death what is decadal growth? Decadal growth rate is a change in the population over a decade. Decade is up like once in 10 years. What is the change in the population? Uh, we observed a change in the population of 17.64%. The change in the number of individuals in a population per unit is uh, the... Oh, sorry, the slide has been repeated. So, we completed uh, the growth rate i hope everything is clear 